welcome to nine on the positive side. Thanks so much for being here this weekend with us. One North Carolina woman is making the world a lot more colorful. As Chad Tucker found out, she's found herself too behind the potter's wheel. I told my husband one day when I was like, I bought a building and I'm going to start doing pottery. <laughs> All right. And Heather Carlisle has been throwing clay ever since. Um, if it doesn't have a good foundation, it's most likely not gonna be successful. And it's easy to get wrapped up into the creativity part, for sure. She started as a way to escape. It's made me bloom into the person I am. And found herself around the potter's wheel. I've learned to come out of my shell, definitely. So many people don't see the colors in their lives and we wanna show it to them. And her work is colorful from bowls and mugs to unique gnomes. So what we normally would do is we would put it in here and we'd let it get dry. A lot of times your glazes are gonna- Her first student. Yeah, oh yeah, everything in here will get painted. Her husband, Sean. Yeah, you'll glaze everything. That's part of the process. Patience, for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is my escape. This is the serenity. Uh, also teaching them the way I've learned. Throwing clay, she says, keeps your focus on what matters. It's a process. Pottery has opened that for us. It's been a big thing like being encouraging, learning and not giving up and being able to express ourselves. And that's been a big thing for us. This one has three layers in it right now. Proving finding a foundation and patience can open a lot of doors. We only have so long, so you might as well stop and smell the roses and enjoy your life while you have it. This will be the top. In Davidson County. This probably will be a mug. Looking for Roy's folks. We'll add handles to it. Chad Tucker. And we'll probably put designs on it and things like that. Fox 8 News. Once I started, it was like, actually, yes, I can. That's the mindset. Yes, I can and I will. Always a good mindset to have. One man in Washington is proving it's never too late to accomplish your dreams. 65 year old Fred Cherry of Beaufort County recently qualified for this year's CrossFit Games. Now on your sides, Abigail Velez learned how the senior says there's no timeline to success. Fitness Unlimited and Boco CrossFit is going to be home for Freddie Cherry as he gets ready to take his talent and strength to the next level. <laughs> As long as you want it bad enough, you can go get it. He always works out with guys like I'm 36. He can work out with people my age or in his 40s or 50s. Fred Cherry qualified for the 2023 CrossFit Games, something that he wasn't able to do on the first few tries. I think it's pretty cool because he can, if he can't do it, he's going to try until he can. It took him six, seven years, but he, he finally did it. So. Cherry says his motivation comes from loving what he's doing. Being competitive, just always enjoy that part of it. And then it's everything we do is different. You know, it's a different workout every day. So, so it's just not, not boring. It's just always something exciting to do. So, Gym owner Amy Gerard says this is a big accomplishment for Fred and the gym. It's pretty awesome. I don't think a lot of people realize kind of the scale that it is. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not just North Carolina. It's just not the U.S. It's basically everybody in the world his age that could, could compete in it that does CrossFit. Gerard says Fred's consistency and focus on achieving his goals should be motivation for others. He's just consistent and he's made it part of his day-to-day -day life. Um, and we all can do that, uh, in my opinion. It's just making it a priority. Now Cherry's gym community has rallied around him with fundraising efforts as they prepare to take him to Madison, Wisconsin for the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. In Washington, Abigail Velez 9 on your side. And we wish him the best of luck. We know there are good things happening where you live. If you have a story idea, you can send it on over to us. There are a few ways to reach us. You can email newsdesk at WNCT.com or you can reach out to me over on Facebook or over on Twitter. Over in Ohio now, students there got a special visit from some pause therapy pups. Students in this classroom got to meet Desi, a six year old mini golden doodle. They got to pet her and learn all about therapy dogs while inspiring a love of reading and learning. They're just trained to be affectionate and just make people feel better. So that's our main goal is just to go around. Sometimes it's a crisis that we visit. Uh, we, yesterday we did a crisis visit where a student had passed away from cancer. Davis says he loves watching the children's faces light up when they do meet those therapy dogs. 
Making a card for a person is special, but what about making a card for every kid in town? It's a big task, but nothing a five year old in Wisconsin can't handle. Dale Ryman reports. I like the Legos. In many ways, Lucas Smith embodies every other five year old. Whoa, I'm trying to make my cave. The world revolves around him some days but he wants to include others in that. I'm trying to get the stickers out, Mom. Inclusion through birthday cards. Oh, there we go. It all started as a community service requirement for Rural Virtual Academy. So this is kind of cool to do. He decided that he was gonna make birthday cards for every kid in Antigo, and that that's what he wanted to do. And we got our hours in that we needed, and he just wanted to keep doing it. Not for extra credit. LH8. Just out of the kindness of his growing heart. It was like happy mom heart. I was so excited that he was so like loving and wanted to give back. I like about drawing inside the cards. And the outside the cards putting stickers on is my favorite. Lucas sees his world through a different lens. They think he might be on the spectrum, but we don't have like an official diagnosis yet. Pretty good. That's awesome. The cards keep his creative mind focused. And here's Kukuloda. I think right now he's kind of more in it that he wants to make the person feel happy, and that's just the end of the goal for him. Run! This was his first birthday card this year. <laughs> Eddie Novak just turned five a few weeks ago. After seeing a Facebook post, mom put in a request for a Lucas card. I love your new friend, Lucas. Sweet words. Words she hopes will inspire more kindness. Whee! It just shows that he wants to spread happiness and just share some joy with the other kids. You wanna do some robot ones? Yeah. Okay, there you go. I just hope that he kinda like takes away like the kindness for people you might not know. Can you get me a yellow crayon, buddy? As long as Lucas keeps getting requests, he'll keep spreading the joy. One card and one sticker at a time. But I'm so proud of him. That's pretty good. Thank you. And that was Dale Ryman with that inspiring story. Next on Nine on the Positive Side, how sailors are serving in more ways than just one. When most people think of the Navy, they think of working on massive aircraft carriers and weapon systems, but there are so many other jobs available to sailors. If you like cooking, you can become a culinary specialist. And if you like music, well, you can become a musical ambassador in the U.S. Fleet Forces Band. Aaron Miller has this story. <laughs> Symphony. I think everyone would agree that we feel incredibly fortunate to be able to do what we do. Somewhere along the line we encountered uh, somebody that knew about this opportunity to actually serve our country in the military as musicians. The trombones and saxophones replacing the more traditional military gear. Whenever the, the, the leapfrog skydivers or the, the Blue Angels will visit a town, oftentimes we'll accompany them and play concerts. I haven't heard any of the bands before, so it was a lot of fun, yeah. They don't just play in the United States. So the tunes take them around the world. We try to pick repertoire that's appropriate for entertaining sailors because we do that. But we also pick music where we can honor veterans. We play a lot of patriotic music to honor our veterans. I'm not sure why. One, two. It's as simple as that. But they gave me a drumstick to try out the tunes. Let's just say I'll be leaving the music to the professionals and those aspiring to join. Job. It's not just the military classics One, either. Two, three. Sometimes it's a little rock and roll. And it's just getting more and more competitive. Um, you know, every music school across the country is cranking out amazing musicians, so we put a lot of care and effort into our work. I love getting to do this. I mean, I get to play the guitar for thousands of people in situations I probably never would otherwise have the opportunity to.
And then as Aaron Miller reporting for us, summer is almost here. We're getting you ready with an all new people and places special. You can join us Monday Memorial Day at 530 for our half hour people and places summer special. We're showing you some unique places across the east that you might want to go to this summer. And we're also talking road trips to restaurants, breweries, beaches, and just so much more places where you're sure to meet some amazing people in the process. That's Monday, this Memorial Day, starting at 530. A mother daughter pair take an international trip for the ages. I'm Naomi Ruckham with how two pilots are making history. This story is taking flight. A mother and daughter are making history at 42,000 feet above. Naomi Ruckham shows us their journey together as pilots and lifelong friends. <laughs> Terry Edison and her daughter Nicole McAllister have always been close, but this Mother's Day, their bond is soaring to new heights. The duo can now claim their place in history after becoming the first mother-daughter team to co-pilot an international flight. You're looking over there once we got leveled off and wow, you know, this is, this is a, two of us up here flying this huge jet. That was a warming feeling. I enjoyed it. Late last month, the FedEx pilots took a 14 and a half hour trip from Memphis to Incheon, South Korea, nearly 7,000 miles side by side. Terry served as captain. Nicole took the helm for takeoff and landing. It was one of the better landings that I've had. <laughs> so. In that moment, it was funny because my mom was sitting right next to me, but I also reflected what my mom said, where it was like, no, I know I'm going to do well. At a young age, Nicole admired her mom's career in aviation, so she became an Air Force pilot and eventually joined Terry at FedEx. Nicole, how does your mom inspire you? Well, my mom inspires me in so many ways. She was always there, and as an adult, she's always been here. Now a mom herself, Nicole reflects on how her mother did it all. Terry says the journey has been worth every minute. Being a mom and, and doing this job, being a mom and doing any job, it's not easy to you know, find that fine balance of being able to do both and being able to do both well. Their message to moms everywhere, let your dreams take flight. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. And to make the trip even sweeter, Nicole's dad and Terry's husband, who was also a pilot, served as a relief pilot on board. Their trip comes nearly 91 years after Amelia Earhart's historic solo flight across the Atlantic. And here's another inspiring story for you. A retiring United Airlines pilot in Chicago will share his last flight with a special co-pilot, his daughter. Captain Chris Bales is retiring after 39 years on the job. When he flies to Los Angeles from O'Hare for the last time, his daughter Allie Bales will be right at his side. Captain Bales' older brother was also a pilot. It runs in the family, and now Allie will continue the family legacy. And switching gears a little bit, here is a little bucket list inspiration for you. A British traveler has set a new world record by visiting all seven wonders of the world in less than seven days. Tina Krause is in London with more on the whirlwind adventure. I have got to hit the road. And I'm when Jamie McDonald said goodbye to his family in England. And I'm going to bring you something back really special. He knew he'd be gone for less than a week. This challenge for me made me the most nervous because there was 43 pieces of transportation that needed to go right. His mission? To see the seven wonders of the world in less than seven days. Come on, we're doing it. Starting with the Great Wall of China. I actually feel quite emotional. Then the breathtaking Taj Mahal in India. I don't think I've ever seen anything as beautiful as that as a building goes. Oh, wow. And the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. Three out of seven wonders. But there was little time to revel in the moment. McDonald had another plane to catch. 18F again. He took 13 flights in all, 16 taxis, nine buses, four trains. Here we go. <laughs> and a toboggan as he ticked off a bucket list of world landmarks. Can you actually believe people used to like fight to the death down there? It just blows my mind. With every wonder he witnessed, the globetrotter known as Adventure Man raised money for his superhero foundation helping kids with disabilities. 
We've done it, Jamie. We've done it. And on the oh, final yeah. lap at Chichen Itza in Mexico, he set a world record. <laughs> Just in time to fly home for more adventure. <laughs> Tina Krause, CBS News, London. What an awesome adventure, and I'm sure his family was so excited to see him when he got back. Sometimes it's the little gestures that make all the difference. A lesson in kindness, too, is next. Sometimes the smallest gestures can have the biggest impact on someone else's life. Steve Hartman found such a story. A few years ago, Melody Morrow of New York City hurt her foot and needed physical therapy. But she says what really made her feel better was paying the bills. You asked for a receipt. Correct. And it comes in the mail. Correct. And what was special about it? On the envelope, on the front of the envelope, it had these little music notes. Her name is Melody. But this is a big health system. Personal touches on billing statements aren't typically their thing. And then it began. Every month thereafter, her payment receipt arrived in the mail. And every month, a new drawing. They started out simple, like this treble clef. But as the months progressed, the envelopes got more and more elaborate. And this was original art, created anonymously just for her. It's hard to even describe. It was incredible. Melody did call her provider, MJHS Health System, and asked if by chance there was anyone in the billing department who was artistic. She says the phone got quiet, and then she heard, hey, Emily, it's for you. I'm like, uh oh, what I do now? What were you hoping was gonna come from this? I like to make people happy. Accounting clerk Emily Margolis is hardly a frontline caregiver, but she says she can still make people better, and her drawings are her way. Melody was so grateful, Emily decided to ramp up her game even further. <laughs> she began taking Melody's mailings home at night and spent hours turning those plain white business envelopes into masterpieces. Then I started adding rhinestones. <laughs> I know I got involved with the gold leaf. That was fun. I had never <laughs> done that leaf. before. Yeah. Where was this going to stop? I, I know how much she had left to pay. <laughs> <laughs> this was the last mailing but not the end of the story. Hello. Mwah. Melody and Emily became friends and are now co-curators of an exhibit at this Manhattan coffee shop, showcasing Emily's enveloping creations. Although Melody says what's really on display here is the healing power of kindness. This was a stranger and she was doing that just for me. And that's the beauty of it. A note of harmony. Steve Hartman on the road in New York. And thanks for joining us for nine on the positive side this weekend. But of course, one last race to the finish with these corgis. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.